All right, old GK here. Here we have uh, an original Dave 2x8. This is a uh, personal buddy of mine, Mr. Brad. And thanks to uh, sharing a 115 volt regulator. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Brad bought this uh, bad boy. Paid a uh, pretty penny for it. Mm. Uh, if I put it this way, he paid too much for it for it not to be working. His uh, complaint was he's getting no output at all. Kind of just hike it up like this and take a gander at it here. And uh, one of the uh, filter cap capacitors had came unsoldered. And I can feel the way this thing is bubbled up right here. And the other two up down there are more flat. This cap right here, I don't... My guess is, is the cap is probably a 16-volt cap. It's just my guess. And uh, it's been ran on the unregulated supply, and it's puffed it up. Some capacitors can run 2, 3, 4 volts higher than they're rated for and still survive for a while. While others, you know, will, will pop like right away. So... I know Dave took the uh, the uh, covering of these off because they look pretty cool that way. Let's see, these two are flat. This right here is bubbled up. So I'm, I'm going to be removing all these filter caps and putting some new ones on there. Uh, another thing I see wrong, I can go ahead and tell that um, this was originally designed as a 2290 driving eight twenty eight seventy nines. Somebody has put these two Toshibas in there and you can easily see that. You can tell this box has had a lot of issues. It's got a lot of Mitch Mat uh, Mitch Match pills. It's got dots, non dots. There's two twenty eight seventy nines. Well, there are two different lot numbers sitting right here in the driver section. But this section is built for 22290s. Input transformer, output transformer is wrapped for 2290s. So I'm going to have to get in here and pretty much convert this whole section over to a 2879 2 pill. I'm going to take this right here off, rewrap, rewrap. These probably got 330s on there, don't they? Yeah. I'm going to take these 330s off, put 120s on there. I mean, I could leave them on there, but I'm just going to convert it the way it would be. And it's pretty much it's going to be considered as a uh, X-Force uh, Fat Boy. Some other people out there, they would call a 2879 two-pill driving eight a high drive two by eight because you got two 2879s, so it can take a little bit more drive onto the driver. Um, but I kind of call them medium drive in a sense, you know what I mean? <laughs> So, you know, it just allows you to where you can use a, a little bit bigger of a radio with a box. You're going to have to put a little bit more into the box to get the full output out with two 2879s, which a lot of that has to do with preference. It has to do with what kind of radio you're running. If you're running a small radio, you're going to want two 2290s. They're going to get up and go with a little bit lesser drive because they're not, you know, as, as powerful as 2879s. But anyway... Me personally, you don't need this no more. I may call and talk to you about that, but you really don't need this no more since it's going to be 227 pounds, but it ain't going to hurt leaving it in. It ain't going to hurt at all. But I'll talk to you about it, see what you want to do. So anyway, uh, he's got a couple things on the list he wants me to do. Um, you can tell at one point in time that That this could have been possibly a one by two by eight. I don't know. You can tell where a pill strip was right here. You see, you can tell. See it? These two holes are cut. But there again, if I want to use my educated guess, my educated guess is this right here. Let me zoom on in so you can see. See how this hole right here looks a lot bigger than this hole? 
what I'm guessing was this two pill section was sitting in this hole and this hole. Something happened when they were switching out the transistors and they either stripped uh, stripped the threading out of this hole. So to make it easier on them, they just moved the two pill section over this way to these two holes, which is pretty smart to do to get away from that. So it appears that, like I said, it's one point in time well, you know what? I take the one by two by eight completely out. That's exactly what happened. This two pill section was sitting in these two holes to begin with. Don't ask me why. Usually you'll see them sitting right here in these two holes all the way over here. But anyway, so uh, Mr. Brad wants me to add uh, two, uh, two uh, new switches, which I have right here. Which are flat switches that he likes. It's pretty cool little switches. We're going to be adding something that I have been wanting to do for a long time. And I have never seen it done, but I have always thought it would be really cool. And I'll be quite honest with you. I've, I've thought to myself that this would be cool as hell. If BBI would do this. Yeah, I'm going to come out straight out and say it. I thought it would be cool as hell if BBI would do this on one of his boxes. To where. Because he, he's one of the only ones I can think of that's got, you know, he's using a skull. But to have tiny little red LEDs in each, you know, where each eye is. And make them transmit LEDs. Where you key up the eyes light up on his emblem. I, maybe he's done it and I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it, but I always thought that would be neat. So I mentioned this to him. I always thought it'd be neat to do that to the snake on the Dave made here and just put a tiny little three millimeter LED right there, or even smaller, to where the snake's eye lights up. I mean, the way the emblem's made, you can kind of tell. See, this right here is actually painted on. He took a little bit better of a cheaper way out that's just as good. So that'd be pretty cool. That's what we're going to do. Make that snake's eye light up when you key. <laughs> and uh, there's a couple other things. We're going to be pulling all these uh, Toshibas out of here. There's probably some blown ones. I don't know. I can tell where where I can tell where people have took these off and put on new ones. They possibly could have popped some pills, put on some new ones right here. You can tell they didn't add the... Uh, the input one back on here which you know this one's not really mandatory but it's still good to put one if you if you can and i can tell that this one right here has been added as you can see look how long the leads are on that thing okay. somebody calling me from illinois so i'm gonna go ahead and pick that up but i just got a couple of these things that i'm gonna be doing for them the ground bolt down here does not even have a cable going to the board. So we're going to be doing that too. Adding a preamp and a few other things. So I'll be back. I'm going to answer this call coming in. Well, brother, I see exactly why your dang amp wasn't working, man. And I hate it for you. I really hate it. I know you told me you paid $1,100 for this box. Brother, this box probably worth no more than about 300 bucks well, maybe you know, maybe a little cheaper than that because this box is hooked up backwards every transistor is fried from base to emitter it is hooked up backwards and one one of the tops popped off the transistor which that happens at times but this is what I'm getting for every single one of them, man. And I don't know how in the heck somebody would have hooked this up backwards either. I mean, you only have power wires in this, but they did it. They hooked the power to that bolt and hooked, the, hooked them to a ground somehow or another. I don't exactly know how whoever did that, but this is pretty much what it looks like. When you uh, fry transistors, <laughs> testing them with a uh, atlas when they've been hooked up backwards. It's going to show you a short. 
from red to blue. This base to a metal. This stack right here is all the ones I've tested so far. I know they're all going to test the same, but i am still got to test them just in case. Uh-oh. Just in case. Yep, see? Check one more real quick on camera. Right. I really hate that, man. Heck, I hate that for myself, too, because any of the transistors okay. that were still good in this thing, mm -hmm. you were going to uh, trade them towards the uh, towards the build, I mean, towards the repair. And uh, these days, man, I love used Toshibas. Ain't got a problem with a used Toshiba at all. Helps me uh, save a little money and helps some other people save a little money on repairs to have a good stock of used Toshibas. Oops. Yep. I'm going to check the uh, rest of them. I've checked them all except three. <sighs> Let's go ahead and take a walk in the house. This is the time right here that I hate with a passion. And whoever you bought this box from, Brad, I want you to let them watch this video, brother. Because you deserve some money back, man. For you to pay eleven hundred something dollars for that two drive and eight. To have all 10 transistors shorted from base to emitter because it was hooked up backwards. You deserve to have a good big big chunk of your money handed back to you, man. I'm just being straightforward. I'm not trying to be a beehole to the person, you know. I mean, the person may have not, not have known it. You know, he may have got it from somebody, you know. And I understand these accidents do happen. I, I went and got... uh some Toshiba's out of my safe deposit box. Here's yours. I'm telling you, these things are worth like gold, man. I went and got, I went and got these out of safe deposit box for the next few builds. But here's yours, my friend. Beautiful sight. You won't be seeing this no more. They're only selling pairs. My buddy Brad got lucky <laughs> and uh, got these right before they had ran out of the, the uh, matched uh, set of eight. They're only selling pairs right now. You know what's pretty crazy? See how they're five ones? I think every single one in here are five ones too. That's five J's, but I think the rest of them are five ones if I remember correctly. Yep, five ones. That's for a Texas Star 667 right there, five ones. These two right there are mine. Five ones, yep. The rest of them are five ones. They must have had a quite, quite big number of uh, lot number five one. All right, man. Let's get these out there and get them prepared to put into the box. I'm going to clean up the box a good bit. I think I might remove the ten ohms and uh, put some uh, quarter watt ten ohms in there for you. And uh, just going to clean it up a bit, take some of the old solder off the pill strip, get some new solder, reflow it and all that good stuff. Alright, but I just had to make that a uh, quick clip showing that. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking, man. I had a customer one time hook up one of my GK800s up backwards, and I mean, it was heartbreaking for him. Luckily, I was able to get him a uh, match set of eight uh, used ones, 
and that was three years ago and he's still running that eight pill today on some used uh, Toshibas they don't mind if they're used as long as they matched and they're good in shape you ain't got nothing to worry about but dang it man I hate that you, you, got, you got some talking to do with this guy you got this box from brother eleven hundred dollars for a box pretty much with no pills think about that all right I'll be back Get this thing working for you, man. Maybe we could team up. I don't want to do the blood thing because it sounds like he really does. Alrighty. The boom thing, I guess. I know he really sounded. Moving good. right That's along good. here. It does. Uh -huh. And and actually, you do too. So the only difference oh, between you and him is he's going to go find. I check the uh, output loading run. capacitors. <laughs> and uh, they weren't bad. They were just yeah. about. Jason. Eight pico ferret off from each and other, which I didn't like that much. Okay. One was at 153, the other one was like at eight pico ferret below one. that. So yeah, I didn't like that much. I went ahead and put you two matched. Sorry. 150s in. Five dollar caps from Mr. Uh, Tony Tony Tone. Anyway, uh, and uh, I have two things that's okay. Um, the first went ahead and took out all the uh, well. I'll, I'll, I'll explain all this in the final video and just go through everything so I won't explain it twice because I know that's what I'll do. <laughs> I went ahead and uh, sh shined up the old uh, tuner cap for you. It was looking pretty bad. I thought I'd just shine it up for you. And I've desoldered a lot of these big solder globs for you, man. It's an old box. I mean, you ain't going to make it look perfect. But uh, time to solder these uh, seventy something dollar parts in, man. I'm gonna do that and go from there. I'm gonna do that. Then I'm gonna. I took these off. So this is sixty-one core material. There's hardly no. And, 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 there's hardly no. I always want to say induction. It doesn't have a lot of inductive material on the power wire because of the power source because there's there's no cores on these ten gauge wires at all. And these only had two uh, wraps around the sixty one material. That's not a lot of. Uh, then what are the odds? Not a lot of millihenries on their thing, man. <clears throat> this is going to work out a lot better for you. This is a 43 core material. Hello, Steve. That's going to do a heck of a lot better. I'm keeping a little bit of that RF off the power wires here. Well, it's on the other side right here. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and uh, I always like to put 43 on my input chokes as well, so I took off took off them and and I uh, rewrap you some input chokes. That's the uh, two places I like to use 43 in on my chokes to ground and on my power wires. The reason why I like to use 43 on my power wires is because at 43 is a lot higher impermeability than 61. Why use 61 when you can use 43, which is way more higher induct, has a more inductivity than 61, so you got a better chance at keeping that RF off the power wires. Way better chance. It's always good to use a 43 core on your power power wires when trying to keep a EMI off of them, if you want to put it that way. All right, we'll be back. All right, moving right along. Pretty much uh, getting towards the end of this uh, work here. Now, I absolutely love Dave Made Boxes. I really do. I love... The way they're put together, it's got more of that home brew feel to it. The only thing, though, that I do not agree with is take a look at the ports on the back here, okay? You know, anybody that's familiar with the Dave box, they already know about this. Now, I don't quite 100%, I don't know 100% if this was done on purpose or by accident I mean I even 
I even thought of a theory of maybe they wanted the air to come down, hit the parts, and the air from the parts go out here, you know, and extra air go down here and, and out the back below that. But see, the problem with this is air is kind of like electricity. It's going to flow with the path of least resistance, as far as I understand it. So in that case, you would think that, yes, these ports right here, or not as is not as much area or not as much circumference as you want to call it than here to here so you would think that maybe the majority of the air would come out here and come out here but see the, the, it, the here's the deal we want all the air that we possibly can get going through these heat sinks okay and the air is already going to come down and hit the parts and then come here throughout the heat sinks like that. So I've, I've seen other people. Uh, I've seen uh, Mr. BBI. I've seen him have to do this to a lot of day made boxes. And, uh, and I've uh, pretty much, within the last, uh, I don't know, year or two, I've done it to every box now that comes my way. I'm going to go ahead and wall this off so that no excess air can get out here because you want all the air possible coming through these heat sinks. So I'm going to use this copper board here, which is a real thin, it's got real thin finella to it. And I'm going to uh, just work on cutting, cutting me out. And I think if I do it just right, I won't even have to bolt it. I think I might get lucky with just having to solder it. But anyway, I'm going to do that for this side and this side so then there won't be no question about it every bit of air that's coming in the box is going to go through the heat sinks then out the back and none of the excess air will not be wasted going through the top of the porch right here so anyway that's a modification we didn't talk about but i just don't feel right letting this box go back to you brad without doing this you need to make you know you need to make use of every bit of air coming in this box you know of course i don't have the equipment to be able to measure how much air is being wasted because of, of of this but common sense will tell you that there is air being wasted no doubt about it all right we'll be back all right big brother we're all done all i gotta do is put the sides back on which i will uh do that and come back at the end of the video after I get all the stainless hardware put on it but uh yeah this took a bit more work than I anticipated in the beginning and I always have that problem and I, I can't dissect it from my my mind state that when I get started working on something if I see something I don't agree with or I see something that I feel could be done better I can't stop myself from doing it and I go ahead and do it anyway and a lot of times, or shall I say, just about every time, it adds a lot more time onto a uh, project. But as you can see from the original video, I've uh, done, a, done a bit to this thing, man. So I really don't know where to start, so I'm just going to kind of start from this angle right here and work my way that direction. And uh, <clears throat> I made sure to fulfill all your requests. So uh, I put, put a new uh, bolt on here on the back for you. This was the original, what's left of the bolt. I had to cut it off. I had to cut it off because it didn't give me enough room because of the brass tube and I didn't want to have to unsolder that when there wasn't no reason to. And uh, so that's what's left of that. I put brand new stainless bolt on there for you and originally you know there wasn't no strap going to the board which of course on these type of cases you know they're 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 electrically i mean you can just touch a continuity meter and, and and get an electrical connection so they're pretty much grounded through the sides right here the only problem i got with that is without using stainless hard hardware let's see if i can show some examples here you know the hardware over time can become oxidized or etc not giving a real good connection possibly as you can see an example 
from the tip of that how it's not it ain't got that shine no more to it so i'm replacing all that with stainless hardware just went ahead and put your strap down there to be safe which is what you asked uh, for anyway and uh, once i get the top on it'll push this for as, as you can see which i've already explained i customly cut some uh some copper down here to hide the air hole air holes from the port that you can see from inside and as you can see you still see a little bit of the top of the port right there once the top is put on this is pushed forward that right there will will not be shown anymore but i did my best that i could on there it's definitely going to restrict the airflow from coming out the top of this out those ports now and all the air is going to be pushed through the heat sink out the back you can see the evidence of that right there because that's pretty much that's the port that's being uh that's being blocked now with that thin copper board i'll be sending this with you that's a brass wing nut if you want to use for the ground so that's your new bolt right there for the ground all right get that put back on there all right this was kind of loose i tightened that up and also ran a ground wire down to the bottom just in case that does ever come loose because if you're using a y mote or a wireless remote now i know there's another guy out there making wireless remotes the wireless remote has to have a ground and it gets its ground from here so if that ever comes loose then your wireless remote ain't gonna work no more so that's why i always like to run a ground just in case it does ever come loose. I shine that bad boy up for you. I clean the, the whole board as best as I possibly could clean it. You got your all new uh, non dot 2879 Toshiba's installed now. And uh, I think I already mentioned that I took the uh, output loading capacitors slash tuning capacitors off, put two uh, matched 150's on there five dollar caps from tony tony tone from fat boy ica and of course i think i've already uh told you about basically there was no ferrite on the power wires at all take a look at that gk braden job on the power wires i cleaned your power wires too man there's a lot of gunk on there it's just one of my ocd things I like to clean them, and a lot of times when I do clean them, it'll take the uh, letter off the wire, but this is, uh, I believe it's SIA, uh, what was it? You got it right here. SIA, you know, that's your look, I need to find me some good 10 gauge wire. That's new concepts right there. That's, that's, that's my company right there. That's the company wire I use right there. Yes, sir. If you ever want to get some power wire, give them a call. Tell them uh, Gatekeeper Amp sent you. But uh, here it is. SIW Amp King. SIW Amp King. I need to get me some good 10 gauge wire out there. So I kind of looked it up just to see. But yeah, I braided that joker up for you, man. <laughs> so, uh, went ahead and did that and and uh soldered in for you if you want to put it on an anderson or something coming from the plug out you can put your ground wire in there put an anderson on there or if you want to put your a welding connector on there or whatever um there's your preamp sorry i'm trying not to move this i got me a gopro now y'all sitting right there all charged up i'm gonna try to start implementing that from now on so there's your preamp man uh with invert circuit went ahead and took the uh, feed through uh, impedance matching capacitor off you now got one on this and I mean there is absolutely no reflect on the feed through I'll show you that in a minute uh, this right here is for manually key right here an RCA jack that was already on here it wasn't, it wasn't hooked up so I went ahead and uh, hooked the wire up to it to the keying circuit just in case you do want to use that and all that's going to be is an rca jack an rca plug and when you touch the two connectors the, the, 
the side of this plug is grounded to the case and so basically when just when you connect the two the amp's going to key so you be you know you can use a foot pedal etc whatever you want to for that um a hand key whatever so that option is now enabled just in case you do ever want to uh, use that all right another thing i went ahead and did man is installed you two new so 239 connectors you did mention that and while i, I had to take these off anyway to uh put the uh the, the copper uh plates on or whatever to, to cover up the holes up here on top and uh these are just regular plastic connectors or whatever so just just to make it a little bit better for you i knew you'd appreciate it i put some uh, high dollar teflon connectors on there for you these right here may cost about a dollar 20 a piece maybe a dollar 50 a piece maybe cheaper than that a dollar a piece these right here cost 350 a piece so i got you some uh teflon so 239s on there for you now big brother and uh of course i think i already mentioned I think I will start to talk about it. There, there was no, there's no ferrite beads on the power wire up under the board that's feeding through the hot bus. So you have no inductance on that at all to help keep the RF off your power line, your, your, your distribution line here. So, uh, I went ahead. This is what was on there. Some, uh, 61 core, which is uh, default by Dave. And, uh, what I went ahead just to help a little bit with that is uh got some 40 big 43 cores here i, I like using these with four gauge wire because they go straight through there just perfect i went ahead and put some big 43 cores here for you and uh put three wraps around that that's going to give you four five six times more inductance than, than you did have on the power power line so that'll help keep the rf off your uh, dc line there so we'll be going back in your house etc and I like, it's just my style. I like using 43 uh, core for the uh, the uh, Class C chokes, if you would like to call them that, from the from the back of the transformer to ground, keeping the amp in Class C mode, being pulled all the way to ground. And uh, that, that, that gives a lot more inductance for that, since that is a DC ground, y'all. Okay. So, uh, you had two of these cop caps that were blown. It was puffed up as you can see. God dang it, things even pushing down. So I, I went and put your four new filter caps on there for you. Those are 22, uh, 2200 microfarad each. I uh, had to rebuild the two pill circuit for you because, like I said, this was a 2290 two driving eight. So I went ahead and had to uh, take both the capacitor. Well, they didn't have a capacitor on the input, but I uh, took the 820 off, put you a new thousand. Uh, um, metal clad on there for you I took the output tuning capacitor right here put you a DM19 150 on there took the 330s off here put you uh, two 120s I didn't have to put n uh, new feedback circuits on there for you so I reused them and uh, the input tuning cap was just fine I checked the I actually checked the two pill section independently that's the first thing I did do just to make sure it was tuned just fine then after that, I rechecked the tune, which was Dave's tune, uh, the, the impedance matching network for the two four-pill sections. Spot on, man. Spot on. You got the uh, old-fashioned question mark inductor here, which I like to call the question mark inductor. Uh, that way I look at that is to all you builders out there, when Dave came out with his question mark inductor, it, it, he did it as a question mark because it makes you think. Is that right? <laughs> and of course, with the amount of wire used, it gives the proper inductance to be right. <laughs> so that's pretty. That's pretty cool right there. I like the old question mark inductor there. That's just the way I see it. I, Dave might not have done it like that for that reason. But I uh, got you new switches on here, man. That you asked for. That right there is for your on and off. There's for your preamp on and off. And we got the old snake eye on. I'll show you that here in a minute. The old snake eye transmit LED. Oh, let's see here. If there's anything else I need to point out. Um, 
It's pretty much what I call what I like to call dirt work. You know, wasn't hard work at all. It just took time. You know, what I'm saying it took time to do. I double checked your relay, cleaned the contacts on the top for you. Um, cause I know that relay's pretty old, but it's working just fine. Um, put you a resistor right there, which you know you don't have to have it, but just to be politically correct. I added that on there for you. Um, I cleaned up all the solder, reflowed all the solder on each uh, transistor section, and reflowed the solder on the hot bus too. When you get, when you get to do something like this where you've done a lot of stuff, sometimes it's hard to remember everything that you've done. But um, hopefully, I I think I've got everything. You know, of course, you've got all these new wires now that you had to run for the preamp, the transmit and everything which is coming from uh this switch right here which i've got running right here okay and uh yeah there you go man let's get on to the actual performance of this bad boy and let's see what she's gonna do now it is a 2879 driver two pill 2879 driver so this is kind of considered a medium drive or you could say a high drive two by eight so it's gonna take a little bit more drive to get it doing what a uh 2290 by eight 2879 would would be doing since you got a uh, high drive driver circuit i guess you can call it i like to call it a medium drive so we're just going to show the four watt radio first which is not going to be doing a whole lot of bird because you know you need a little bit more drive to get it to get it going on the rms end of things and uh i'll first let you see the feed through all right we're off we're still recording all right let me hook up my uh, four watt radio here and get on this soldering iron. Is that soldering iron on? Mm, no, it's not. Okay. Excuse me here for a second. I got to get these wires all untangled here. Alright, that's the right coax. Let's go ahead and plug it into the Teflon SO239. I'm hungry, man. I think I'm going to go get me some uh, Arby's after this guy to pick Oh, yeah. All right. Do, do. All right. This is the feed through. Five watt slug in reverse, as they say. Do. Look at that. Don't even move, man. That guy pick ain't even moving. It don't get no better than that. That's called a perfect 50 ohm, perfect 50 ohm, with no imaginary part to it. What do you think about that? Oh, 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 don't even move. It's hard to get a tune, feed through tune that flat. It really is. That's that's great. That's great. That's a good thing. All righty. We are on the big boy right here. The big armadillo. We ain't going to talk about what's inside, but we're running off the power supply down here, which is always pretty hard to see in there because it's always dark. So, uh, but we are, this is supposed to be a 200 amp supply. I haven't load tested it, but we are on an unregulated supply. Okay. The fan, the fans are regulated. They, they are on a regulator. I just don't have them hooked up. And I'll hook everything up and come back with just a quick clip of it all hooked up. But, uh, so we are on the four watt radio, which is doing about 18 peak watts. Okay. We'll go ahead and turn it on. This is something, like I said, this is something I've been wanting to do for a while and ain't never done it. Somebody out there probably had done it. I think of Danny and one, two, three's done it before, if I remember correctly. The old snake eye transmit mod. What you think? <laughs> it looks pretty cool in the dark, of course. So you get to see the old snake eye light up. There you go. I'm gonna turn my other radio off. I see it's on. It's gonna be picking up my voice. All right, so we're on the four watt radio. Okay, thousand watt slug. 
No. No. So that's giving you about 500 birds. Like I said, you ain't gonna get a whole lot out of it on the 4 watt radio on the RMS side. Input reflect. Input tune. Oh, looking beautiful. Looking beautiful. PEP. Tail in the corner. Thousand watts in the corner. Alrighty. Uh, just for the heck of it, I'm going to press pause and find my 2500 watt slug. Be right back. Alrighty, I got my 2500 watt slug now. Alright, we're going to go ahead. Well, you made just for the heck of it. It ain't going to be that big of a difference. I will show. Let me show the, the peak real quick. Just with the 4 watt radio. Just for the fun of it. Then we'll, I'll switch back. I like my 1,000 watt slug. Alright. This is just the peak wattage with the 4 watt radio. Cover 29. So you're looking at the top scale. Oh! Holy shit, is that right? I mean, this cat pick a smoking, son! Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I had to look and make sure it wasn't the 250. This cotton picker's smoking. Son. P-E-P. -E Son. No. Oh, man, this cotton picker's already doing over 2,000 watts. That can't be right. Hold on a second. I'm going to put the 5,000 watt slug in. That cotton picker is smoking. Son. Where's my 5,000 watt slug? There it is. Are you serious? 5,000. I got the 5KW slug. Which I don't see much. Alright. We're looking at the bottom uh, middle scale for the 5,000 watt slug. Ooh, that shit is right. That shit, excuse my language. That is amazing, man. This, this kind of figure is doing 2,000 watts. What's the voltage dropping to? Oh, 15.7. It's a little high on the voltage. We're not putting a super big load on the supply yet. But this cotton picker is doing 2,000 watts already. All right. I'll go ahead and crown this right here the highest peak watt two driving eight that's ever been on my bench. This is the highest peak watt two by eight that's ever been on my bench. That is cool. Usually it's doing around 1,500 watts at this point, but this joker's doing two grand just with the bench radio. Hey, Brad, I bet you're happy to see that, ain't you, Cotton Picker? All right, let me put the 1,000-watt slug in. Me, personally, you know, that's all cool and dandy. I like seeing that bird watts. That's what I like, seeing that RMS power. That average power. That CW is what I like to see. <laughs> All right, let's hook up the old hot radio here. That thing's smoking, though, on the peak side, man. Son. Son. That's why I had to hook up another slug just to see that for myself. Wow. It's going to be a 2,500-watt PEP amplifier. No doubt about it. All right. We have the hot radio stickman modified. Rest in peace, my friend. So we're going to be driving 8 watts into it now. So let's see how much we can get out of it. Turn that radio off. That radio on. Let's see what we can get out of it with 8 watts. And then we're going to hook up, guess what? The derail. With one quick key. Alright, 8 watts RMS drive. Let's see how much we're getting out of this joker. Variable's all the way up too, of course. Boom. Thousand watts RMS. Ten brand new Japanese soldiers. Getting down with the get down. Letting the mop flop is all I can say. What's this thing talking though when you got there just talking? Let me get that camera to focus. Hey man, what's this thing talking? Oh. 
Letting the mop flop at a grand. Son. Talking 800 bird. Old gatekeeper out here just cruise and break, break, break. All right, let's see what the voltage is dropping to. Boom. 15 volts. 15 volts. 15 volts. All right. Now we're going to the 2500 watt slug and we're hooking up the old D-rail. I just want to see what this cat picker's going to do on the top end. This box is awesome. We'll be back. All right. The old D-rail is hooked up. We started, we started off at 4 watts RMS. We went to 8. Now we're going to bump it with 16 watts RMS drive. Which I do not success. I do not. Uh, where was I about to use success? It's wrong with me. The RF's in my brain. I do not uh, suggest to be driving this amp this way. I just want to show what it's doing. And this is actually going to be the most amount of output I have seen a 2x8 done on my bench. I don't think I've hit too many 8 pills with a D-rail radio, 2 driving 8 radio. Alright, so we're going to put 16 watts RMS through the 2 pill driver. And whatever it's going to put into here, which is I'm probably guessing about 250 to 300 bird. I don't know, but anyway, 2,500 watt slug. Almost 1,500 watts bird. So that's ranking in at about 1,400 bird. 1400 bird the power supply is dropping to 14.5 volts if we could keep it at 15 15 or so it would be doing 1500 bird that's a hundred bird less than what a 16 pill could be doing pep almost 2500 watts pep ranking in at about 20 to 2300 watts pp which is the most i've ever seen on my bench this two driving eight is awesome all right let's get everything put back together and i'll be back with the final video of the thing put together all right mr brad here she is all done every single screw has been took out and replaced with stainless steel like you requested here's the big bag of parts uh, I get to put in my repair box one of these days I'm gonna do something that my buddy stick man used to do when uh, a customer didn't want their parts back which are mostly trash or, or is trash to probably eight nine nine out of ten customers he would uh, go through all his bag of parts from repairs and stuff, and he would treat himself to what he called a junkyard build, meaning he would take all used parts, you know, of course, test some parts, make sure they're, they're good and usable, and he would build him a free amplifier. Of course, he would have to probably, you know, use some new parts, possibly, probably, you know, the key and transistor and stuff, such, such stuff like that. But he would treat himself to building him an amplifier. And I've never been able to do that before, really. <laughs> Actually, I've never just planned and sat down and built myself an amplifier before, ever. Ever. Ain't it hard to believe? So one of these days, I'm going to do that. One of these days. But anyway, man, here's your baby. Tender love and care from the GK has been successfully finished. I just wanted to show you the uh, preamp with the invert circuit. You can use this preamp with the box turned off, as I'm about to demonstrate now. All right. Of course, that's my uh, input reflect meter, which is in front of the box, but behind the radio. You got a 10 watt slug in the output meter now. All right, the relay is on. I mean, excuse me, the preamp is on, which means yes, the relay for the preamp is on. So the preamp is on. Now the preamp is off. 
back on off so that's the invert circuit inside which is a keying circuit doing pretty much the opposite of what a normal keying circuit is doing it's actually taking power away from the relay so that's a 10 watt slug I'm on my 4 watt radio 1 watt dead key oh swinging a little bit over 4 watts just a tad bit over oh the invert circuit is working and that does work on SSB as well but this is not a sideband uh, box this is a class C A M box he did not request an SSB delay but if he ever wanted one in the future it would be very simple to do and like I said the input reflect on the pass through is beautiful the second that you key this preamp it is now passing through both relays the main relay and the preamps relay Oh, it does not get no better than that. That is a beautiful pass-through tune. That's a 5-watt slug. That's called a perfect 50-ohm impedance, which is your source impedance. Oh, 4 watts RMS straight through the box. All right, and here is with the fans on. Not too loud at all. All right, here's your feet. You asked for me to put some feet on it for you. So there are your feet. So like I said, we had to do quite a bit on this thing, man. Like I said, I thought I was finished putting all the stainless steel hardware on. I went to put the top on and totally forgot about the hardware on the fans and holding the regulator. So I was like, oh man. Now I got to replace all that. He said he wanted all new uh, hardware, all stainless steel. Whew, that's a little. That's, that's a little bit of hardware too, man. These things they do take a lot of screws. So there you go, man. I got to hook that little supply right there. I ain't gonna key it, but that little snake eye transmit LED is really cool, man. Really cool. Alrighty. Well, what I'm gonna do, man? Like I said, they've got a regulator on these fans. I'm going to hook it up to the unregulated supply and put about 20 volts on it and just let it sit overnight. And when I come out here tomorrow, if these fans are still working, it's good to go. I'll go ahead and ship it out to you. I'm just going to test the regulator because I know the regulator on these two fans because I know that you are going to be running this on the unregulated supply. And if the, then if there's any problem, then I'll get in there and and do my thing but the way i try to look at things if it ain't fixed don't broke it the regulator that's on the fan is working just fine i felt it it's not generating any extra heat at, uh, either so we're good to go man i do like these switches man i really do because you ain't gonna you ain't gonna hurt it during shipping they're flat they're easy to engage it is uh, i am a pretty big fan of those switches now all right, man, let me get on off here, man. Get this thing uh, hooked up to the unregged supply and let it sit all night and wake up and come out here and see if the fans are still on. What you think? Oh, GK said that. We're good and gone now. Bye-bye. 73rds.